Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. As the title says, in this video we will cover how to utilize the external flash memory along with the LVGL. We will use the QSPI to interface the external flash memory, which will be used to store the assets used in the LVGL. I have already covered a few videos on LVGL with SDM32, and you can assume this video is the continuation in that series itself. I have also covered a few videos in the QSPI series, where we saw how to perform read, write, erase, and even how to create an external loader to write the data into the external flash memory. This video will not explain much about the QSPI, rather we will focus on integration with the LVGL. In the previous video we saw how to use the LVGL with the FSMC display, and we will continue with the same project today. Let's build the code to confirm everything is fine. Alright we now need to enable the QSPI peripheral in the CubeMX, so let's open the IOC file. Here you can see the schematic of the discovery board I am using. It already has a quad SPI flash memory attached to it. I am going to configure the pins as per this setup. Let's enable quad SPI bank 1 with quad SPI lines. I have enabled bank 1 because that is how the actual hardware is connected to the MCU. The four data pins are connected to PF6, 7, 8, and 9. Let's configure this PF7 to the quad SBI IO2. Pin PB2 is connected to the clock, and PG6 is the CS pin. Let's configure the pin PB2 as the quad SBI clock, and the pin PG6 is already configured as the CS pin. Let's configure the quad SBI parameters now. The system is running at 100 MHz and this flash memory does support the transfer rate more than 100 MHz. Anyway I am setting the prescaler to 1, so the quad SBI clock will be reduced to 50 MHz. Let's set the FIFO threshold to 4, this is as per the instructions explained in my QSBI tutorial. The sample shifting is by half cycle. Next is the flash size. This is the formula to calculate the flash size. The size is 21 for 32 megabits memory, so it will be 22 for the 64 megabits, and 23 for the 128 megabits. Let's set the flash size to 23, as I have 128 megabits of flash memory. We also need to check the box to generate separate files for C and H. Go to pin settings, and make sure all the pins are configured at maximum speed. If they are not, then you can select all pins, scroll down, and set the speed to maximum here. Alright now go to the project manager, code generator, check the box to generate separate files. That is all we need to configure, click save to generate the project. I have already explained how to proceed from here. We need to copy the quad SBI library files to the file generated by the CubeMX. You can get these files from the SD's GitHub page itself. I already have the file from my test project, so I will use the functions from it. Let's copy the required data from the files into our project files. Here the flash size is defined for the 128 megabits memory. I got these files from the SD's quad SBI project for the F412 discovery board. I have already made videos covering the famous W25Q series in the QSBI mode, so you can also use it. Anyway I will make a video soon covering the LVGL with W25Q flash, 
where we will load the entire LVGL from the external flash itself. We will quickly test if everything is working fine. Let's initialize the CSP quad SBI, and then put the memory in the memory mapped mode. In this mode, the MCU will see the external flash memory as an internal memory, and we can directly perform memory operations. Let's modify the flash strip file now. Here is the internal flash already defined, so I will copy it, and modify it for the external flash memory. I'm naming it QSBI, with origin address at 90 million hex, and the size is 16 megabytes. Now let's define a memory region, where we will relocate our data. This memory region should be in the QSBI, which we defined just now. All right now I am defining a buffer, which will be relocated to the external flash. We will do this by adding a section attribute, which will point to the same location that we defined in the flash script. Now perform a read operation to check if everything is working fine. Let's build the project now. Here you can see the QSBI memory is being shown in the memory detail tab. If it does not get updated, you can click this refresh button to update it. Or if you want the IDE to update it automatically after each build, go to the IDE settings. Then expand the SDM32 cube section, and click on build views settings. Here set this to auto, and click save to save this configuration. You must click on either the main file, or the source folder for it to get updated. Alright let's debug the project to check if it is working. Open the memory tab, and add the new memory location, 90 million hex. I am going to set a breakpoint here, at the memory mapped mode statement. We have hit the breakpoint, and you can see that the memory content is not being displayed. Let's step over this statement. The memory mapped mode is now enabled, and you can see content of the memory now. We still don't have the data we defined, and that is because I forgot to add the external loader to the debug configuration. It is necessary to write new data to the flash memory. Let's add the external loader to our debug configuration. I am using the F412G discovery board, and here is the loader for the same. If you have a custom board, you can check out my video in the QSBI series explaining the external loader. Alright let's debug the project again. Here I am adding the breakpoint again. There is no data being shown right now. Once we step over this statement, we have the data we defined. So the memory mapped mode is working fine, and we can now utilize it to store the LVGL assets to the external flash. Here is the previous project, we worked on the Squareline Studio. I am going to add a few images to this project, and a button will be used, to cycle between the images. I already have four images of the required resolution in the ping format. Let's add these images into the assets. Now click the image widget to add the image, and under the asset section select the image. Repeat the process to add other images as well. Now add the button to the end, so that it will be displayed on top of all the images. Let me rename the images starting from 1 to 4. Now we have all four images visible, but they are on top of each other. To display only one image at a time, we need to hide other images. Click on the image that you want to hide, then click on flags, and check the hidden flag. The image is now hidden. We will hide three images, so that when the screen turns on, we at least have one image in the background. During runtime, we will modify this hidden flag to change the visibility of all these images. When the button is clicked, an event will trigger, and here we will call the function button clicked. 
We will write this function in the IDE itself. Alright that is all we need to do with the studio, click save to save the project. Now click export to export the UI files. We now need to copy the UI folder generated, to our project. Now refresh the project once, and you should see the updated UI folder inside the drivers. Here you can see the image data in the hex format for the respective images. Let's open the event source file to write the button callback function. These functions are from the previous project, so let me remove them. Let's include the main file, and define an integer to keep track of the button count. When the button is clicked, we will increment the num variable. If the variable is 2, we need to show the image 2. The image 1 is already loaded with the screen, so we need to hide it also. LV object clear flag is used to clear any set flag from the object. We need to clear the hidden flag, so that the image can be shown on the screen. The object name is UI image 2, and the flag we are looking for is, flag hidden. So clearing the hidden flag will show image 2, and now we will add the hidden flag to image 1. When the button is clicked again, the num variable will increment 3, and now we will show image 3, and hide image 2. Similarly, when the num variable is 4, we will show image 4, and hide image 3. If the variable is 1, we will show image 1, and hide image 4. Since we have only 4 images, we need to reset the variable to 0 here, or else it will increment to 5 in the next click. That is all, let's build the project now. Here you can see the flash occupancy is around 780 kilobytes, which is too much. As this board has 1 megabyte of flash storage, it can accumulate 4 or 5 images easily, but if you have less storage like 500 kilobytes, then you definitely need to store the images in the external flash. I will show in a while how to do that. Here in the memory details tab you can see each image occupies around 112 kilobytes of memory, so 4 images in total occupies 450 kilobytes. Most of the MCUs cannot afford this much memory for the images, and this is where the external flash comes in. Before we proceed with the external flash, let's run the project once, so that we can compare it with afterwards when we will push the image data to the external flash. Here you can see the screen has the background image with the button on top. When I am pressing the button, the background images are changing. Everything is working smoothly, as it is expected from internal flash. Now we will push the images to the external flash memory. Earlier we discussed the section attribute used to relocate the data to the external memory. We will use this section attribute to the image data generated in the UI folder. You can write this attribute anywhere in this definition, but it is better to write after the LVGL attribute itself. Let's copy it, and paste it in the other image data as well. Let's build the project again. You can see the flash usage has been reduced, and instead the 450 kilobytes of QSBI is used. Even in the memory details, you can see that the images have been shifted to the new location. Let's run this project now. Everything is working fine with external flash also. 
The images are loading just as they were during the internal flash. So we got the LVGL assets to load from the external flash memory using the QSPI peripheral. This method works fine if you have the internal flash around more than 400 kilobytes. But if the flash memory is very low, say around 256 kilobytes, then even the basic LVGL cannot fit into it. In such cases, we need to load the entire LVGL from the external flash. Basically we will perform the XIP, execute in place. We will cover how to do this in the upcoming video, with the STM32H750, and the W25Q series QSBI flash memory. This is it for today. I hope you understood how to use the external flash memory to save images used by the LVGL. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.